Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to the team at Renault London West, I'm bringing you an in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust video of a 2018 Alpine A110 Premier Edition. Alpine was first founded in 1955 by well-known mechanic and racing driver Jean Riddell. The company later went on to be very dominant in the 1970s, with victories in the Monte Carlo Rally, World Rally Championship and the Le Mans 24 Hours. This latest model of the A110, which shares its name with Alpine's first A110, built in 1962, was unveiled at the 2017 Geneva Motor Show, and has since received very positive reviews across the board. Before we can access the engine, we first need to open the boot and unwind several screws. We can then raise the rear glass cover and place it upon a small stand. With this up, we have access to the Insignia emblazoned engine cover. Once again, a few screws need to be removed to lift this panel out. Now finally looking into the engine bay, one of the first things we see is this strut lying across the top for added rigidity. The new A110 is powered by a rear mid-mounted 1.8 litre four-cylinder single turbocharged engine. This powertrain produces 248 brake horsepower and 320 Nm of torque, which results in a 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time of 4.5 seconds and a limited top speed of 155 miles per hour. This Premier Edition car finished in Alpine Blue, which is one of three colours to choose from, Noir Profonde and Blanc Soleil are the two others, is limited to just 1955 models to commemorate the year the company was born and comes with a very high spec as standard, including lightweight say belt bucket seats. Fogel HD stereo system and active sports exhaust. Keeping to its original philosophy of a lightweight and compact design, the new A110 is constructed of an aluminium body with a weight distribution of 44 to 56. It is 4,180 millimeters long and has an unladen weight of only 1,103 kilograms, leading to a power to weight ratio of 225 brake horsepower per tonne. This Premier model is fitted with the optional 18 inch front and rear five section lightweight forged Otto Fuchs wheels Stability is provided by double wishbones at each corner. Braking power is provided by 320mm ventilated Brembo discs found at the front and back. For extra weight saving and an apparent world first, the car's parking brake has been integrated into the rear calipers, saving an extra 2.5kg. The car comes with a 7-speed dual-clutch Getrag transmission that is coupled to an electric brake vectoring system that enables tighter cornering by gently applying the brake to a specific wheel while cornering. Now we've finished the model overview, we can begin the exterior tour from front to back. We can begin with the small flaps just in front of the front wheels. There is a full sensor array along the front bumper for park assist. The wide low mouth is broken into two main areas. The central section is for main air intake for the radiators, with the outer section assisting with this and airflow management. To the outside of these are aero sections designed to help channel airflow laterally along the car. Above, we find the first of four independent headlights. These have full LED daytime running lights and main beams. There's a really nice branded aluminium component just ahead of the rear light. Moving further back, we find the bonnet with its prominent central spine and more subtle lines on either side across the midsection. Now moving up to the windscreen, we first find two standard wiper blades before the small windscreen itself. Moving to the lateral aspect of the A110, we first find the small side indicators. The fuel tank flap is found above and to the right here. It can be opened with the light to press as it is spring-loaded. To save weight, there's no removable cap, just a suction cover. The car has a 45-litre fuel tank and returns a claimed combined MPG of 45. The otherwise smooth electrically adjustable wing mirrors have a sharp, dynamic line running through them that carries on from their base. Further back, the windows are separated into three sections, a front quarter, main and rear quarter. Above, the roof has dynamic lines cut into the centre to aid its aesthetic and airflow. Moving back down we find the small door handles with the keyless entry system. Moving up and back we find the small rear quarter windows which help to improve blind spot visibility. Behind these are extra air intakes to directly supply the rear mid mounted engine with cool air. There's a French tricolure on the rear pillar that flows over these intakes. Now moving to the rear of the car, we first find a slim LED brake light integrated above the rear window. 
The curved glass rear window and engine bay cover is below, with three long air vents below. Moving back further, the rear arches feature these cutaways, which hallmark where the original air intakes were on the very first A110 in the 1970s. The small boot lid sits behind. The rear light complexes below are the antithesis of those at the front, with their very angular design and internal X-shaped signature layout. Underneath we find the rear bumper with its sensor array for park assist, and underneath this is a very aggressive rear diffuser. This area has been designed to create real downforce and works in conjunction with the Venturi tunnels found under the car to help speed up and direct airflow. This is an important addition considering the car has one of the lowest drag efficiency in the sports car segment. Centrally, we find the outlet of the active sports exhaust. Let's hear how it sounds, first in normal, then in sport mode. Before starting the interior in-depth tour, we can first take a look at the key. It comes in this leather pouch. The Alpine A is embossed on one side, with embossing to open the boot, turn on the lights, lock and unlock on the other. The handle pulls out easily in a standard outward motion, as does a small and noticeably light door. Much of the interior of this Premier model is upholstered in quilted or standard smooth black leather and Alcantara, with blue contrast stitching. There are also aluminium components and inlays, joined by real carbon fibre. We can start the in-depth interior tour with the doors. The top of the door starts with a body-coloured plastic section. This area helps to keep the weight down and bring the dynamic exterior inside. This panel flows down the door and is broken up by a central quilted leather section with another tricolore and angular aluminium door release ahead. Below this is an indented section with the leather upholstered armrest below leather upholstered handle and first door speaker below. As you would expect with this type of car, the sill is neither high nor wide. It is topped with a branded aluminium kick plate. And as we move up, we first see the pedal box, then the controls for the electrically adjustable wing mirrors, and finally the manually adjustable air vent with its carbon surround. The steering wheel to the left holds onto the three strut formation of the original car, but now the components are closer to the flattened bottom. There's Alcantara at the top, with a leather contrast coloured 12 o'clock marker. The 10 and 3 positions are upholstered in leather with blue contrast stitching and have very prominent grip positions built in. Below is an aluminium component with the first cruise control buttons. Centrally we find the blue Alpine logo and horn and to the right, further buttons for cruise control and underneath, the red sport mode selector with the flattened Alcantara bottom below. The top stalk here can be used for the wipers, with the small buttons on the end used to cycle through the options on the driver's display. Below, the second stalk can be used to manage calls and media. Ahead of the driver is a fully digital 10-inch screen. It is broken up into three sections here, from left to right. Engine revs with engine temp built into the red line, outside temperature, a clock and fuel level with gearbox position below and trickle or under that, and finally a speedo in miles per hour. With the car turned on, we can cycle through the different screens to the left. Direction of travel is first, radio station is next, a G meter with turbo information, mileage, MPG and remaining range, remaining mileage and time until next oil change, service interval info, tire pressure and trip info since reset, messages, night brightness, general settings menu and central speedo. This screen changes when the user transitions through the three drive modes, normal, sport and then track. However, in each screen the French tricolore is retained. Looking ahead, we find the first focal tweeter, the satin carbon dash, the plastic top section and leather upholstered lower section, and second focal tweeter last. Moving down, we find the central touchscreen infotainment display. This screen is broken up into five sections. Starting from top left, we have access to the AM, FM, and DAB digital radio. The small plus symbol to the left enables us to easily return to the home screen Moving right is the screen for phone connectivity options. Moving to bottom left, we find the car's navigation system, which can be zoomed in and out of by pinching and spreading.
The penultimate screen, found bottom right, is a further screen for phone connectivity through Bosch MySpin. The central Alpine button can be pressed to open more driver and performance focused information screens. Brake pressure and coolant temperature is first. Turbo pressure and intake temperature. Real-time usage information for various measures. Graph to record times over varying distances. G-meter. Further graphs that display real-world torque and power curves. Clutch and oil temperature is next, with current selected gear. This can be displayed in both simple and 3D views that display the gear ratios and placings. An oscilloscope and graph that displays real-time steering angle is next. The final screen here is a stopwatch, displayed in the colours of the French tricolore. Moving back to the home screen briefly, there are three direct access controls to the top right of the screen. Moving down, there are five solid aluminium buttons. These are four from left to right. Engine start-stop, traction control off, hazard lights, lock control, and finally an empty button. Below these is a very angular fixed air vent. Below this is a small control array with controls for, from left to right, temperature control, demist, air direction, AC off and recirculation, and finally fan speed. Moving down onto the central column, the first thing we find is a carbon top storage area for the key. Moving back are three drive mode buttons. Drive, neutral and reverse, and airbag off. Behind is another carbon topped section with further buttons. First are the electric windows, behind, the keyless go engine start stop button, then the electronic parking brake, and further controls for the car's cruise control system. The central column is an arching section with an aluminium plaque below complete with the car's production number out of 1955. There are also two USB inputs in addition to an SD and AUX input. Behind this is a shallow storage area with a grippy rubber floor. Moving back up, the leather upholstered central column runs into two aluminium struts and down into a bin or cup holder. If we follow this area up, we eventually reach the rear port window. Unfortunately, we can't see the engine because of the cover, but it does provide some rear visibility. The seats here are the optional Sabelt Sports bucket seats that weigh just 13.1 kilograms each. They are upholstered in leather and Alcantara and feature aluminium inlays and are actually very comfortable. They feature a handle underneath that can be used to slide them back and forth. There's no tilt function as they're one-piece buckets. There are three positions seen here that are used to judge the correct height of the seat for the car's new driver. There's also a small amount of storage space behind the seats. Now we've finished the interior tour, we can view the car's remaining storage space. Being a mid-rear engine car, like the Cayman and Boxster, this also has two storage areas. The front boot is open using a lever on the passenger side and has a capacity of 100 litres. It's open by depressing a button on the underside, near the number plate and has a capacity of 96 litres. Inside the rear boot, we find the customer handbook, safety kit and oil, all of which have Velcro on the underside to ensure they are secured during driving. The lid can easily be closed. Moving back inside briefly, we find nothing else on the passenger side other than an aluminium strip. There's no glove compartment here to ensure the car is as lightweight as possible. The leather upholstered sun visors have non-illuminated vanity mirrors, but there are small reading lights on either side of the ridged ceiling.
Centrally, we find a borderless review mirror. So that concludes my in-depth tour of this 2018 Alpine A110 Premier Edition. Thanks again to Renault London West for allowing me to film with the car. All their contact details are in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, thanks for watching.